uh, one of the things that, that I need to kind of share with you and, and have an understanding uh, of these particular words is that the Lord speaks to me in several different categories. He speaks to me first uh, of, a, of a general word. And during Yom Kippur of every year, during that season, I just get away and I spend time with the Lord and I ask him uh, what he has to say for the new year. Because we go by the Jewish calendar, by the way. We don't start now and tomorrow. We've been in it since September. And, 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 and so I do that. I go away and he gives me these particular, uh, these particular words and themes. So the first is the general theme. Uh, next is about America. About America. Then the, uh, the church, the universal body. Uh, then ignited church. For those that are connected to this ministry, exclusively for those that are partners and, f- and friends and members, however you want to, it's just family to me. Uh, it's, it's, it's all of us loving the Lord and connecting. You say, how do you know when you're family? Well, w- when you love each other, you pray for each other and you give. It's pretty good, right? You contact, connect, you communicate. That's, that's family. Okay, so that's what we believe and we pray for you guys every day. And then the final th- category is my family and that's something personal that I speak to my family about and the Lord gives us direction in our home for the new year and that we uh, will not be mentioning tonight but uh, that is for us. So that, that's what I wanted to, to begin by, by telling you and I only have a part of what the Lord is saying to the body of Christ. There'll be many voices uh, maybe they already have spoken, but many voices will speak over the next couple days into the next couple weeks <clears throat> about what they believe and see happening in the new year. And so I don't have the, the exclusivity of it. I don't have the whole thing. I have a part, and we all have a part, and I want that to be known. Also, uh, for those that are new, and we have many new viewers and listeners, um, the words that the Lord gives me, sometimes they're in seed form. In other words, the, the, the beginning of the year and the end of the year are not bookmarks. They're not bookends. Uh, sometimes the words are given several years ago that are seed forms, and then they begin to uh, materialize and blossom several years later. So they're not all with from January 1st into December 31st. It's, it's not that way. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they happen several days after we've got finished with our prophetic service, they begin to happen. So I just want you to know that. And then some of the things that I'll mention, uh, you already can see it happening because the Lord began his new year back in September. Does that make sense? That's why it's so hard for me when I preach, having received the word of the Lord, I'm, I'm already chomping at the bits because I'm like, okay, this is what's happening because the Lord's already showed it. And uh, <laughs> you'll be able to go back into some of the messages uh, before, uh, like from September to now, and you'll begin to hear pieces that the Lord has released to us concerning the totality of the word. So I like to open up with those things and and so that there's clarity. On this particular night, I am going to give you those several uh, beginning themes of the general theme of America and as well the church, and then I'm going to minister to you a particular uh, chapter that the Lord gave me concerning the totality of what's happening. And then I'll go into uh, some other uh, uh, of those uh, categories. Is that okay? All right. So, Father, thank you. Uh, Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I ask for you to hide me behind the shadow of the cross. I ask for the unction of the Holy Spirit to be able to declare and decree these words with accuracy Bless everybody who has taken their time, no matter where they are right now, to sit and listen to this word from you, Father. And I pray that they're enriched, they're blessed, there's confirmation in their spirit, and that there be hope and encouragement for the coming days. In Jesus' name, everybody everywhere said amen. The Lord spoke to me during my time, and he said that uh, 2022 would be the year of Babylon rising the year of Babylon rising. And he spoke this to me. He said, great change, great change, great change. Great change is coming to the earth. Things that you and I have been accustomed to 
and you're fully aware because your life is already changing, is going to change in a tremendous way. The challenge is for you to be able to be flexible to change with it. The challenge is going to be for the church to be able to be flexible to change with times and to understand the unmovable truths of the word of God which will give us stability in changing times. So far the church has failed this test. It's very obvious with the pandemic. So great change is coming to the earth. Babylon is rising out of the ashes. Babylon is rising out of the ashes. Normalcy and the normalcy comes the final government. Let me read it to you this way. Babylon is rising. Out of the ashes of normalcy comes the final government. You see, the reason we're going through the things that we're going through with the pandemic and the lockdowns and the mandates and the challenges and the fear-mongering and all the panic that's happening, the prices and, and just inflation and pressure and all these things that are happening that are challenging us and changing our lifestyles, this is how the final government, according to the word of God, rises out of the normalcy that we used to know because the truth of the matter is we're not going back. It's over. I said it's over. Out of those ashes of normalcy comes the final government. The seed of Satan will be occupied by the son of perdition. The seat of Satan will be occupied by the son of of perdition. There's coming that day. There's coming that time. And I believe in 22, we're going to see seed form. We're going to begin to see that, a rising up of this totalitarian government, this, this dictatorship worldwide. It's already happening. If you don't believe that, just look at Australia. One example, not just communist China, but look at Australia as we have great friends over there who write to me and send me updates of the things that are taking place over there. Nation after nation will fall prey to the seducing spirit of Babylon. Again, it is already happening. We've been watching nation after nation issuing draconian measures arresting people, fining people, cutting off their liberties and freedoms over a pandemic, over lies in certain areas and arenas of the totality of this issue. And you know that it's the truth. But it's something worse than that because what we're watching is a cabal and a mixture of Marxism socialism, communism, Islam, Chrislam, and various other factions of satanic uh, influence that is taking place throughout the world and all these governments. And you're watching the base of it happen right before your eyes. And I will share more about that in a minute. So nation after nation will fall prey to the seducing spirit of Babylon, the beast system, the final government will emerge. So in 22, you'll begin to see these measures increase. It will happen. It will happen. It's already began to happen from September to, to this very point. We've watched the governments get even tighter with control. This is all part of the end time scenario. This is all part of leading to the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. And we as believers, we must be flexible. We must understand the times. We must be like the sons of Issachar and not only know the times, but know what to do. It's time for people to get their head out of the sand. What once was will seem so long ago. 
Let me read that again to you. What once was will seem so long ago as events speed up and accelerate. Come on. We already don't recognize our world. We already, we already don't recognize America. <clears throat> we already don't recognize our churches. And we surely don't recognize some of our family. But it will continue and it will speed up. One of the examples is looking at the weather and what is happening. These are not normal days. Babylon is rising. What once was will seem so long ago. As events speed up and accelerate, men's hearts will fail them for fear. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. It's already happening. Rejecting truth, listen to this, this, is very important. Rejecting truth and denying the reality of life will be man's demise. Rejecting the truth and denying the reality of life will be man's demise. In other words, if you don't think these are the last days, you don't think that God is judging you don't think that pressure is increasing. You don't think that we're entering into the, the, an, our end, the days of sorrows, coming to Jacob's troubles and all of these things that are before us. When you reject that reality, that will become your demise because now you have no protection. Truth is your protection. Truth is your reality. And I don't have the luxury to paint my own reality. I don't have the luxury to come in on a Sunday morning and paint a, ro a, a rosy picture for the body of Christ when all hell is busting loose outside. Because it will be our demise. That's why churches are failing. Let me try that again. That's why churches are failing. That's why pastors are failing is because they're rejecting the truth and they're trying to have their own virtual reality. And it's impossible. You must face it. You must face it. We must pray that our family's eyes open to the revelatory knowledge of Jesus Christ and the hour we're living in. Not by sending them goofy YouTube videos of things that don't happen, but by the word of God. Watch this. His failure to believe what is happening will keep him from his escape. His failure to believe what is happening will keep him from his escape. If I hollered fire in a hotel or in my own home and nobody got out of their bed. Come on, you know what the headlines will be the next day. There were no survivors. But if I holler and I ring the bell and I sound the alarm and I do everything I can to knock on every single door and the folks get up and get out of their bed, they can escape. The only way your family, only way people in our communities are going to escape, and what I mean by escape, I'm not talking about getting out of the planet. I mean getting out of the judgments and walking in faith and walking in God's provision. The only way they're going to do that is have their eyes open to the reality and accept it. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept what God is doing. This goes for church folk too. Because there's so many church folk so many Christians who are shipwrecked over this pandemic. I can look across this here, this church here, and see empty seats of people that used to be, but because of this event and that event and this and that, they, they're not a part of it. How many of all have that in your own life? So his failure to believe what is happening will keep him from his escape. Oh, Babylon, oh, Babylon, come forth into your position. Watch. In doing so, my prophecies of your fall can be fulfilled. I'm telling you, God is calling Babylon forth. 
He's calling it. It's time for the rising up of Babylon in the earth. You need to be prepared. You need to know that going into 22 is not going to be a cakewalk as a believer. Going into 22, it's not going to be so easy. There's going to be great pressure and great changes in our lives. The second part of this that I want to minister to you and that he spoke to me is concerning America. And when I teach the scripture and preach the scripture I'm going to give you, this, the whole messages will all come together. But these are the themes. America. America, the nation that sits in pride, lust, and greed. You think you're invincible and invisible to me. Your past righteousness is not enough to shield you from what is to come. There's so many great people out there who believe in the foundations of this nation. They believe that they can pull on that hope and bring it into a future They believe that they can change trends and change things to bring back a hopeful life and a hopeful future for our children. To those I want to say, you need to study the Bible. To those I say, you need to come back to reality. We've lost many good people in our lives and our families to all of this deception over the many years. And it's crept into the church. No, it's done worse than that. It has settled into the church. And we have been divided. Our past righteousness is not enough. What happened in the beginning days of our nation, what happened during the revival times of our nation, what happened during the great awakening and so on and so forth is not enough. It is time for you to rise to your destiny, Mystery Babylon. It is time for you to rise to your destiny, Mystery Babylon. America is Mystery Babylon. We have to settle this in 22. We have to settle this right now, that America is Mystery Babylon, and we are not going to go back on the fumes of faith of our forefathers or the muskets of yesterday's rebellion and revolutions of the past and try to bring in some type of utopia dream. It's not going to happen. We have been destined as a nation to be mystery Babylon. There will be those that will argue and disagree and not accept it. That's your choice. But you will see in the coming days this year of how this nation will decompose and decay. Let me go on. I prepared you and preserved you for this day. Your sin and your culture have paved the way. Do you think that we can continue as a country with the sewage that we produce in our movies, our music, our literature, our educational institutions, our centers of higher learning, that all of this perverseness is woven into the very fabric of our nation and culture where sex trafficking is going off the chains, not just in Afghanistan, but right down the road in your neighborhood and in my neighborhood and all the other things that are taking place that I don't have time to rehash. You know it's the truth. But our sin and our culture have paved the way. 
We're not going back. We're not going back to what it used to be. The son of perdition is waiting for your rising up. It's kind of an oxymoron because it's a rising up of Babylon, but it's a fall of America. America will fall. America is falling. I don't know if she's on one knee. I don't know if she's on two knees. All I know is America will fall. The America we know, the democracy that we know, we're already a socialist nation. Marxism has already invaded us. Communism has been at work for decades. And on and on and on and on it goes. And we will not be in denial. We will tell it like it is. America will not bounce back. America will never be great again. America will not build back better. It doesn't matter the slogans of men. The reality is America will fall. We don't want to hear this. And maybe some have already shut me off, but it is the truth. Babylon is rising. A new day of paganism will be announced. A new day of paganism will be announced and all the fallen angels and wicked, foul spirits who are assigned to you will take their place. Let me read it to you again. A new day of paganism will be announced. I don't know what type of announcement that is. I don't know if it's just going to be in culture. I don't know how it will be. But paganism, a new day for paganism, a new embracing of paganism will be a part of the culture of America. Yes, it will be. It's already happening. It's already happening. From TikTok videos of teaching children witchcraft to coloring books to witches in the church transgender pastors teaching young children on and on this paganism goes it will increase in America and all the fallen angels and wicked foul spirits who are assigned to you will take their place in other words they are going to be on assignment and they are going to do what they are assigned to do and that is to Raise up Babylon. You better be aware of it. You better be aware of the schemes of the devil. You better be aware of who your children and your grandchildren hang out with. You better be aware. You better be discerning. You better have your spirit go with them. I said you better have your spirit go with them when you pray and intercede. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you. <clears throat> Babylon is rising. She is rising in your nation. Remember, when we talk about Babylon, we're talking about the whole plethora of what Babylon represents. Idolatry, paganism. Again, Marxism, socialism, communism, Islam. Islam, all these different mixtures and, and attitudes and, and religious views and on and on it goes, perversions that are happening in our country. Babylon is rising. She's rising in your nation. O daughter of the Chaldeans, who has warned you of this day? Who has wept for you this day? You will never know for you have killed the prophets who have warned you and you have silenced the saints who cried for you day and night therefore your judgment will be like Sodom and Gomorrah till then America you will play your part and you will pay your price for rejecting me I want you now to go into your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 15, for that is the scripture that he gave me 
concerning these words, these themes that I've already mentioned to you, and of course there's going to be some more that I will add to in the totality of this word of 2022, the year of Babylon rising. And it's a type of theme, if you will, of what he's trying to convey to us so we can have a better understanding. Jeremiah chapter 15, while you're looking for it, some of the backdrop historically is Judah is about to go into Babylonian captivity. The fulfilling of the covenant of the land of the Palestinians or the covenant of Palestine is about to be fulfilled. You can find that in Deuteronomy 28, 29, 30, and 31. You can look through those chapters. God made a covenant with them that if they've walked with him, they would be brought into a delightful land and that the rain would fall and that there would be plenty, there would be harvest, there would be an abundance in their lives. But if they left him, then drought would come, famine would come, and they would go into captivity. So they were at the end of that Palestinian or the covenant of Palestine. It was at the end of it. And they had rejected God. If they continued to rebel, then God would cart them off into a foreign land and they would go into Babylon. And so we're at that place in Jeremiah chapter 15 and really that's where we are here in America <clears throat> because he's talking to them and he's saying, you're coming to the end of this covenant. You've rejected me and now this drought and this famine is coming to you and then you are going into captivity. This is precisely what is happening prophetically in America. We're at the end of this covenant of our forefathers, if you will, this covenant of grace, if you will, concerning God winking and looking the other way at certain things that now we're at the position of mature, maturity. We ought to know better. The church ought to know better. The church ought to act better, but it's not. And so a father who loves, who is very tolerant, has now come to the place where you've run out of runway. And so I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to deal with you how? In captivity. Because we're already in a drought spiritually. And we're already in a drought. In a famine. These things in natural ways. We're already dealing with the side effects of all these issues and ills that are increasing every day. Do you see that with me? Verse 1, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be towards this people. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. God's mind is made up concerning his prophecies and timing. The first thing we must understand going into 2022 is God's mind is already made up. My prayers are not to try to change the mind of God. I'm not going to go on a hunger strike, which Christians call fasting. I'm not going to try to protest heaven and get God to change his mind and his timing. What I'm going to ask God to do is have mercy in the midst of judgment. Thy will, O Lord, be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not going to have a prayer rally or be involved with prayer rallies that are designed and targeting God to move him into something he's not moving into. But I would join with those that are praying for the final harvest to bring in souls for people to get saved. I'm into that. 
I said I'm into that, and I think that's what God is into. So he says it does not matter. These two deliverers, these two intercessors, no matter if they showed up, God says I wouldn't listen to them. We're going to have to settle it this year and recognize and realize and get off the fantasy train, get off the political train. I was watching a, a program the other day, a Christian program, very rare do I watch uh, Christian programs, but this particular one I was interested in, and I watched it and how they were trying to get off the, 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 the old train, the old political train. All of a sudden they woke up and they're like, we need to get away from politics and we need to head into prayer. I'm like, duh, where you been, bro, for the past four years? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? God's mind is met up, made up. Watch this. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they shall say unto thee, whither shall we go forth? What's the answer, man of God? What's the answer, watchman? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? We're America. What are we going to do? We're the church. We're this and we're that. Watch what he says here. Then thou shalt say to them, thus saith the Lord, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as for the famine to the famine, and such as for the captivity to the captivity. And in other words, God says, I'm sovereign, and what I destine you to, that's what you're going to go to. See, in 22, we've got to lift our hands and we've got to say, Lord, I am a living sacrifice. It does not matter what you do with me. It doesn't matter where I go on the earth. It doesn't matter my assignment. It doesn't matter if I'm standing right here or I'm on that seat writing checks out to help the gospel to be preached to the nations of the earth or I'm packing a box to give to a foreign nation full of food and medicines or around the corner for a disaster. I just want to serve you. And if God wants to cause this to happen there and this to happen here and on and on it goes, we have to stand back and watch God's sovereign hand. It doesn't mean we don't pray. What it means is we don't try to pray to change God's mind because you're wasting your time. Verse 3. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into the kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh. You need to go to Second Kings and read about Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, for that he did what he did in Jerusalem. What did he do? Gross idolatry. Unrighteousness. Worse than his father. Do you not see the increase in our country? He did that which evil was evil on the side of the Lord. At the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. <laughs> he brought them back. Verse 5. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? For who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? In other words, who's going to care for America when America falls? Who's coming to our rescue? Listen to this indictment. Verse 6. Thou hast, number one, forsaken me. The word forsaken means to abandon. There is no doubt we have abandoned God in America. Not just America as a political entity and a political force, but the church. I've read too many statistics that we don't have the time together tonight 
to rehearse them all. But they are sickening and they are very saddening to hear the conditions of America's church. So number one, you've forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art, number two, gone backward. I'm reading to you prophetically a compliment to the words that I just spoke to you and will speak to you by the time this message is over. This is exactly where America is prophetically. You've gone backwards. People say, <clears throat> we're a Christian nation. No, we're not. In name, we're not truly a Christian nation. Therefore, will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. And I am weary with repenting. Do you understand that? It ties into him saying, though you bring Moses and you bring Samuel to me, it's not going to matter. My mind has been made up. I'm weary with repenting. There comes a time when the father lets loose and disciplines. And that's what we're watching. And I believe in 22, there'll be an increase of the discipline of God. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. And I will bereave them of children. And I will destroy my people. Since, here's number three, they return not from their ways. You forsake me, which is abandoning me. You went backwards. And now you will not Turn from your ways. Their widows are increased to the above the sands of the seas. I have brought upon them against the mothers of the young men a spoiler at noonday. And I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and tremors upon the city. And she who has borne seven linguists. And she that has given up the ghost, her son is gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith the Lord. That saying right there, that whole part that I just read to you, deals with the men of valor, valor <clears throat> excuse me, the men of valor, the army, a woman having seven warriors. In other words, no matter how strong your military is, it will not stop what is coming. You need to understand that. When the United States Marines has rejected over 200 Marines for religious exemption and their rights to not take a vaccine, they're now kicked out of the Marines because of their belief. Do you think that is honorable before God and that God will just wink at those things? Not including the plethora of articles I read to you about the decay of our military and whom I love very much, and the veterans. But you can't argue with truth. That's what it means. Not even your young warriors can save you. Why do you think Russia is flexing, dominating in the hypersonic missile technology and on and on it goes? China is scheduled to overtake us militarily in the years to come. Maybe sooner than we realize. They've already done it financially. Do you understand we have enemies who are stronger than us? Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. Jeremiah had it pretty rough, didn't he? I have neither lent on usury nor have I lent too many on usury 
yet every man or every one of them doth curse me. And so he's relaying how he feels. I think we all feel that sometimes. And the Lord said, verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and the time of affliction. I read this particular part because there is good news. I said there is good news. The good news is God will be for the church, his church, his bride, the remnant, the called out ones, the separated ones, the chosen ones, if you will, who choose to walk with the lamb and to walk in holiness and to walk in righteousness. It's good news. But watch what he says in verse 12. Shall iron break the northern iron and the steel? What is he saying? He's saying that the iron, the northern iron that is coming is Babylon and you will not be able to break it. You will not be able to break it. In other words, you can't break these prophecies. You cannot break what is going to take place on the earth according to the book of Revelation, according to Daniel and other places. You cannot break them. You cannot stop what is coming. And in 22, you have to face it and you have to recognize Babylon is rising. Thy substance and thy treasuries, treasures will I give to the spoil without price. And that for all thy sins, even and all thy borders, <clears throat> we're going to pay the price. You heard the word. The Lord said, America, you'll pay the price. You'll play your part and you will pay the price. In verse 14, and I will make thee. I want you to highlight that, please. And I will make thee to pass with thine enemies into a land which thou knowest not, for a fire is kindled in mine anger, which shall burn upon you. Look your eyes again. And I will make thee. If you don't like King James, I will make you. How's that for thee? I will make you. How many of y'all love to be made to do something? <clears throat> and I will make you, no matter, listen, how much we pray, no matter how much we protest, you're not going to stop what is coming. Again, let it me be clear, lest I am taken out of context, I'm not saying we don't pray. Of course we pray. We just simply pray, thy will be done, Lord. Whatever you want to do, if there's something that can be done, Lord, show mercy. You don't stand there and let a storm come to your community and do nothing. You speak to the atmosphere. You speak to the storm. You still do those things. Is anybody here? Somebody to tell you, well, you know, just deal with it as judgment and fall down and, and roll over like a puppy somewhere in a corner. That's ignorance. That's not even biblical. But if danger is coming, we make provision. We do stand against it. I'm talking about the sovereignty of God's will being done on the earth, the totality of what he's wanting to do. Not these, not these avenues uh, of the enemy and attacks of the enemy. Of course you stand. Of course you pray. We just have to be careful not to manipulate God with witchcraft. He told them, you're going to go with your enemies. And the word actually is in the Hebrew, it means to cross over. We're going to cross over with our enemies into captivity. That's what's happening right now. We're in a crossover period. It hurts. We don't like seeing our nation the way it is, this was not what we were promised growing up. But he's going to take you to a land you've never been to before. I 
I don't like it. But I would rather know where I'm going than for you to throw me in the back seat of a car and blindfold me and I have no idea where I'm headed. How many of y'all like that? In fact, it'd be kind of hard for me not to sit up front and even drive. Help me, Flo. <clears throat> Verse 15 through 18, Jeremiah's plea for vengeance for those who mocked him in his prophecies. So you could read that later, but they literally mocked him. Verse 19, therefore, thus saith the Lord, if thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth, let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. He's talking to Jeremiah. And I will make thee unto this people a fenced, brazen wall. Listen to what the Lord is telling Jeremiah because this is to the remnant. This is to you and I. He's going to make us that brazen wall. In other words, he's going to protect us during all of these things that take place as they're in trouble with Babylon. They're going into captivity. It's not a maybe. This is an absolute end of the Palestinian covenant. He is now bringing them into, from drought, famine, into being gone, taken into captivity. He's finished. He's done repenting. But he's telling Jeremiah, you're going to be protected. And was he? Yes. Will we? Absolutely. That's why I have no fear. That's why I can stand up here with the calmest hand in the room, knowing what is coming to the earth, knowing what scripture says, and it is terrible. It is dark. But we don't walk in darkness. We walk in love and we walk in light. Are you okay with this? It's the East Coast. We got a little longer and we're going to. What are we dropping somewhere? We're dropping something out. What did you say? Oh, I thought she said a, a squirrel. We're dropping a squirrel out there. I don't know what we're doing here in Georgia. <clears throat> I think it's a peach. Don't waste peaches. Watch this. Verse 20. And I will make thee unto the people a fence, brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee <clears throat> and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver them out of the hand. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have troubles. It doesn't mean that we skate through and we're not persecuted, oh, persecution is going to increase. It doesn't mean that we're going to sail through on a luxury trip and liner, cruise ship. It just means that no matter what you and I go through in 22, God is going to be with us. So it leads me to the word concerning the church in America, and I believe this also applies to the church universal. He said, my church, my precious church, why do I hear the sounds of fleeing? You run from me with no fear of me. You depart from me with no conviction and concern. For I see you have a new lover a new Lord. Babylon has attracted you and pulled you away from me. You refuse to resist and you drink the poison of deception. I'm telling you folks, we've got to get our brothers and sisters out of these Babylonian churches, whether they're live streaming them or whether it's YouTube or their ideology, their philosophies, their theology. We've got to get people out of that poison and get them into Bible truth. Now you will flee 
your habitation, your place of safety will be no more. Let me read it again. <clears throat> you refuse to resist and you drink the poison of deception. Now you will flee your habitation. Your place of safety will be no more. The gates of hell have been opened and my people will be ravaged. Ravaged by false doctrines, paganism, and perversion. It's already happening. It will increase in 22. But listen to this. Yet in all of this, I will purify my bride and preserve unto me a remnant called out sanctified ones who will run with passionate fire. Oh, I'm ready to preach now. <clears throat> We're going to run with passionate fire. You say, Pastor, I can't run very well. Don't worry about it. You're going to run in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to pursue God. Ignite it's going to pursue God. The remnant's going to pursue God. We're going to have a holy fire. Watch this. Not afraid of their times nor the persecution to come. These will be accelerants for their fire. I must read that one more time. Yet in all of this, I will purify my bride and preserve unto me a remnant called out sanctified ones who will run with passionate fire, not afraid of their times nor of the persecution to come. These will be accelerants for their fire. Bring it on. Bring it on, I said. Bring on the fire, the persecution, all these different things because they're going to fill us up. They're going to fuel us. They're going to be accelerants to this fire. You ever seen gasoline thrown on a fire? <sighs> Praise God. That's the true church right there. That's the book of Acts. That's the beginning church. That's first faith. Those are the ones that didn't shrink back. Hebrews 11, those are the ones that are part, are the part of the Hall of Fame of Faith. Sawed in half and didn't even care about it. Looking for a country whose builder and who make, whose maker was God. Those that saw the promise afar of off but never obtained it but pursued it with great joy. Mothers that had their children raised from the dead. Come on, somebody. People not afraid of a pandemic not afraid of a mandate, not afraid of every single stinking Babylonian boogeyman that is out there. Stop it. It's fuel for us. This ought to crank the church up. All this stuff ought to crank the church up and say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to get me in Africa. I don't know how we're going to do this thing. They got this blocked and this blocked. How are you going to do it? You need to read some of the old stories of great missionaries in communist Russia and Romania and living testimonies of our brothers and sisters in communist China who are preaching the gospel underground under threat of death. And we freaking out over a giant Q-tip going up somebody's snoodle. <laughs> That's nose at home we call it a snoodle. Are you here today? You know I'm telling you the truth. You get a free cleaning with it. Oh, come on. I'm telling you. I want to preach this thing, but come back Sunday, would you? Watch this. <laughs> I, I love that. That, that. that just sets me on fire right there. This is what the Lord told me. This is what the Lord said. This is what the Holy Spirit said. It will be an accelerant to us. Not that we're out for some death wish and some mar martyrism and we're out with, we want to be martyrs and, and uh, you know, all these different <laughs> things. <clears throat> it's not that. It's saying, I'm born again. I love God. I just want to see his kingdom come and his will be done. Whatever it takes, Lord. I lay my life down. I die daily. 
He said, I always save the best for last. And I'm, what I'm about to do with the last church will be greater than the first church. I always save the best for last. And what I'm about to do with the last church will be greater than the first church. You better get ready for it. What are you talking about, Pastor? Signs and wonders and miracles. Persecution, problems, and pressure. Threatenings. Closures. All the things that took place with the first church, but we'll see greater. You cannot have greater glory without greater persecution. You can't. It's going to happen. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. You were born and built for these days. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. You were born and built for these days. I don't care who you are listening to me right now. <clears throat> God is going to use you. You were born for such a time as this. You're in the kingdom for such a time as this. From the least to the great, from the great to the least, and everybody in between. If you'll just have a heart towards God, he's gonna use you. <clears throat> And finally, the Lord spoke to me concerning Ignited Church. And again, this, this is for all those that are connected as family. <clears throat> and I define anybody family as those who pray, communicate, they give, they, they, they help us. We're, we're family. We, we get together with the Great Commission. But here's what he said concerning Ignited Church. He said, my jewel, my precious stone, you have endured much this year. Your labor has been seen and many have known your charity. But your greatest work is before you. I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it. No man can block it. Whatever you need, lies beyond that door. Jesus is our door. I said, Jesus is the door of this church. All the money, power, and presence is there. You just need to simply walk through the door with praise and thanksgiving. Listen to me, church. We've got to open our mouths and lift our hands. We've got to walk through the door. We've got to praise him with everything that is within us. I don't care if we karaoke to Jesus comes. I'm going to praise him as loud as I can. If you can't stand my singing, get you some earplugs. I'll put them in the back next to the hand sanitizer. In a, in a box labeled pastors singing earmuffs. I'm going to holler. Come on now. And I'm not, I'm not talking about just a hat here. I'm talking about your house in your car. Raise the roof this year. Be not afraid of the events that will surely rock your world. For your enemy will use it to distract you from the door. Let me read that again. Somebody needs to, <clears throat> needs to hear this. Be not afraid of the events that will surely rock your world for your enemy will use it to distract you from the door. That's exactly what's happening to people today with YouTube and various other media platforms. You're letting the events rock your world and take you off of the door. Jesus is the door. Don't let nobody do that to you this year. 
Stay focused and know that I've already gone before you. Stay focused and know that I've already gone before you. We have to recognize that. The best is yet to come. I'm talking to Ignited Church. I'm talking to the family. Be encouraged, for I will send those of like minds and spirits. I believe that. Not just for this house, but there are many houses connected to this house. And God will send you people to do what you need to do. <laughs> as we need help as well. And they will have a heart to work and worship. And they will help you lift the heavy burdens of the final harvest. I've been praying for this. All is prepared. Walk through the door and see the bountiful provision that I have prepared for you. Walk through the door. So what's the theme for 2022 for Ignited Church? We will walk through the door. We're going to walk through the provisions of the Lord Jesus. It's going to swing open on the hinges of faith. And we're going to obey. And we're going to have help to lift the heavy burdens of the final harvest. I'm very, very excited about 2022. Will it be full of great challenges? No doubt about it. I've just read to you what's going to take place in our country. And as you follow along this ministry, and the prophetic words that will come out through this year will have more direction. But this is what he, what he gave me <clears throat> during Yom Kippur. 2022, the year of the, of the rising of Babylon. As Babylon rises up. But I'm encouraged. And I know God is going to do great things in us and through us. And together, together, we're going to make a tremendous difference in these final days. I just want to tell everybody once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers for Jennifer, Joshua, Judah, and Abigail. And our entire Ignited family here, right here in Livonia, Georgia. And everybody in Livonia in this church, thank you so much. It's been a tremendous year of harvest, and I am so looking forward to 2022 and hearing what God's going to do in your life, in your family, and in your ministry. Thank you, guys. I bless you. Father, I bless your people that have taken the time to listen to these words. I pray that you will transform them and translate them to their understanding that it would be clear for them and that it would be solid in their heart and that they would have direction for this coming year. I bless your people, Father, that are part of this ignited family. Thank you so much for their love, their prayers and support for us here as we take this message of Jesus Christ to the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.